Namaste. <laughs> so if you are a student of music, whether you're a player or a composer, or simply a listener who really wants to know more about music so you can appreciate it better, mastery of the keyboard is the most important step because the keyboard gives you access to the whole spectrum, all 12 keys, and every kind of chord, every kind of musical construction. And these days with synthesizers, the keyboard can also play any kind of sound. But in this video, in this series of videos, we're gonna stick with just a fairly conventional electric piano sound. And we're going to show you the elements of keyboard practice that you need to master the keyboard. And what do I mean by mastery? I don't mean having super chops. I mean being able to hear some music and then play that music by ear on the keyboard. Whether you hear it in your head or in some other uh, recording, you'll be able to sit down and play that music or figure it out very quickly. So we're going to begin from the beginning, which is the major scale. The major scale, we're going to use good old C major. So this is the first thing you need to learn. I just showed the right hand, now the left hand goes like this. Now, this is a specific practice that you will need to learn. And I want to show you the basics of the practice so that you can start doing it on your own. First of all, there's a particular fingering style, which is used in the flat keys. That means C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. And there's a different fingering style used in the sharp keys, which we'll get to later. But first I want to show you the flat keys. So what is the fingering style? The thumbs always wind up on C and F. So with the right hand, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. Now, this gives you the option of continuing the scale either up or down. And the same with the left hand. The left hand is one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, two, three, two, one. Okay, so then you put them together. This is the C major scale. Now in every flat key, the thumbs always wind up on C and F, and then the other fingers distribute themselves according to the accidentals. But now I want to talk a little bit about the scale tone intervals. If you take the scale, and then you go every other note, get thirds. So these thirds are of two different qualities. You have a major third, which is four half steps, and you have a minor third, which is three half steps. This will become very important later on, so pay attention. If you go up the scale in thirds, you have a major third, minor third, a minor third, a major third, a major third, 
minor third, minor third, and a major third. So it's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. This comes in very handy when building chords. The knowledge of what is a major third and what is a minor third. For example, if we now go up the scale in triads, we have a major third, a minor third, and this is a major triad. Then we have a minor third and a major third. That's a minor triad. Then a minor third and a major third. That's a minor triad. Then a major third and a minor third. That's a major triad. The same with G. A major third, a minor third, and a major triad. Then A is a minor third, a major third, a minor triad. Then we get to B. <laughs> We have a minor third here and a minor third here. This is called a diminished triad because of the diminished fifth between B and F. So in every major scale, in every key, the thirds are always major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. And the triads are always Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So let's go one more step. Now we have a major third, a minor third, and a major third. And this gives us a major seventh. Let's go to the next one. A minor third major third, minor third. This gives us a minor seventh. Then another minor seventh. Minor third, major third, minor third. Minor seventh chord. Then major third, minor third, major third. A major seventh chord. Then on G, the dominant, we have a major third, a minor third, and a minor third. This gives us a quality of chord called a dominant seventh. It's the only dominant seventh in the scale tone chords. Next is A, minor third, major third, minor third. So it's a regular minor third. Then Finally, B is a weirdo again. Minor third, minor third, major third. This is called a half diminished seventh. And finally, major third. So, in every scale, there goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. The triads are major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. And the seventh chords are major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, half diminished, and major. And this applies to every single key of the 12 keys. So what I recommend is that you go through the 12 keys and learn all the scales. C major. Then comes F major. Now notice, I'm starting on F with the thumbs. Thumbs on C. Thumbs on F. Thumbs on C. flat. Thumbs on C, thumbs on F, thumbs on C, thumbs on F, and so
so on. E flat. A flat. one to break the rule of thumbs on C and F because it doesn't have a C it has a B <laughs> so the thumbs go on the B and then on the F so now the sharp keys after F sharp comes B so now the fingering changes the fingering for all the sharp keys from B, E, A, D, and G is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. And in the left hand, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, same for E. of the 12 keys. Then it's time to learn the scale tone chords of the 12 keys. So let's start with C major. practicing these things with a view to mastering all the 12 keys and to being able to play these chords without looking. Right? So now let's take a look at F. Remember the scale of F? So similarly, chords are like this. Thank you. 
then similarly go on to do all the sharp keys. So if you learn to do these exercises in all 12 keys, and you can get them to the point where you don't have to look, you can do them just by feel on the keyboard, you will have laid the foundation for complete mastery of the keyboard and being able to play anything by ear. And in the next episode, we're going to show you then how to combine the scales and the chords so that you can play any melody or any bass line. Thank you for watching. Aung Tatsa.